I'm John Saka and this is Kirk Mulder. We're out here today to do an actual demonstration of phasing a distribution circuit. All of our safety equipment's at, uh, ready to go, our harnesses and rubber gloves and sleeves. And we're going to actually do the procedure right now. Well, Kirk, if you're ready, uh, let's make sure that we have voltage on both sides of these open switches. And we'll go uh, road phase to center phase, road phase to field phase, and then center phase to road phase, and center phase to field phase. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom side of that cutout. We'll have this phasing procedure completed. We can uh, close this feeder together. You ready? Let's go out on the line a little bit to keep that cold cord away from that ground. All right, I have 12.5 uh, here, uh, phase to phase, which is 12.470 uh, is, is logical. I'm going to go out to that road phase. Do you want to pull that sure, there's cord down wrong. just a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, very good. And I'll go on the bottom side of this stirrup and get a little more clearance. Uh, road to field, I'm seeing 12.4, which is uh, phase to phase voltage. So that's showing good. Uh, just for extra security, let's go to uh, meter, non-metered end to that center phase out on the top. And I'll go to the field phase and I'm seeing 12.5, so that's a phase-to-phase -phase voltage. You ready to check the bottom side of these cutouts? John, when we're in close proximity like this, there's nothing wrong with just rolling your cord up to control that cord a little bit. Oh, that's a real good idea. That'll keep that away from the ground potential and give us a more stable reading. The bottom side here, I'm seeing 12.4, which is uh, acceptable as a face-to-face -face voltage. Oh, you, know, you want to go to that field phase or road phase? I'm seeing 12.5 here, Kirk, so that's a phase-to-phase -phase voltage. And let's uh, check across uh, field and road phase also. All right, all right, you ready? And I'll pull this down. Pull that cord down a little bit, very good. Well, I'm seeing 12.5 here, so that's a phase-to-phase -phase voltage. Uh, these circuits are hot on both sides of that switch. While you're there, why don't we just go across that open switch you're at? I'm seeing a zero voltage there, Kirk. That's the same phase. And I'm seeing zero at that location, so that's the same phase. And at this location, I see a small variance of 100. Uh, fluctuating to 200 volts, which identifies it as the same phase. You know, on a lot of feeders, when they want to take it off, if you've got small wire coming out of a substation and it's a heavily loaded circuit, and uh, one side of the switch is a large wire close to the substation, it's conceivable we can have a fairly high reading on the same phase, but still go together. I've seen five at 600 volts. That's on the, the distribution circuits. Yeah, that's the difference with a digital meter than over an analog. You're actually going to see the voltage where the analog, it was just a needle swing. that you Just were a real small needle swing and it doesn't make it uh, better or worse. It's just that you can actually see those small differences in the voltage. And those are oftentimes confirmed if we were to take the time to measure the line to ground voltage at all six points. Uh, there's, you'd see a few hundred volts difference between the top side and the bottom side of those cutouts. And, uh, and the meter just confirms that. Well, I'm pleased uh, we can uh, replace those uh, fu uh, cutout uh, fuses and uh, close in on this uh, circuit. Well, Kirk, I'm gonna lay that field and center face fuse barrel in and you're in a better location you can set that road phase in. You got that one? All right.
Well, there's almost no difference on those. That went together nice. Okay, you ready? Let's get down. The purpose of this segment of the video is to high pot underground cable so we can determine the integrity of that cable and how the meter reacts to different uh, conditions of the cable. Uh, Kirk, you've got your meter already set up on your hot stick and and I've got the non-metered end set up and of course it's important that we put the uh, DC high pot adapter on the metered end. And we've selected the right length sticks for a uh, safe work procedure for this uh, for this utility that we're at. And regardless of the length of the sticks that's required, the voltage that you're using, uh, the extra acceptance of the stick is for a more accurate reading of the high pot adapter. Allow me to get these sticks out of the way and we'll get that cabinet opened up and simulate some of this high potting. John, I went down to the next cabinet and I isolated all three cables that we're going to check. We've got three uh, cables that uh, show a variety of uh, faults on them. And uh, so we're going to show uh, what happens with each of the different conditions. I think that's tight enough. This is an 8300 volt underground system that we have. 4800 volts lined to ground. We've already installed the feed through. This is our feed in. This is a dummy cap. This is the, where the feed's going to come from. There's three different uh, faulted conditions and we're going to illustrate each of the three faulted conditions. You ready Kirk? Let's take that dummy cap off. And pick one of the three cables we'll put in that feed through. You're not square. Okay, so if you'll go into that hot bushing, uh, uh, Kirk, and I'll go to line to ground. We're going to read the line to ground voltage. And that voltage is 3.2. The reading we expect to get will be between 60 and 70 percent of the line to ground voltage. And that's what we're seeing here on the meter. I'll put my non metered end uh, into the uh, bushing for the cable that we want to test so that when you plug into that energized uh, bushing, um, we'll be able to watch the meter. What often happens is on a short run of very good cable, the meter reading is very short duration. So by watching it, uh, you see the, uh, the actual reading. I'm seeing 3.2. That's a bolded fault. That's as, that's, that's as short as it gets. It's a bolded fault. So we've got a bad underground situation here. Okay, Kirk, we've tested that first cable and we found it to be fully faulted. Uh, let's take the take another cable of your choice and put in that feed through and we'll check the condition of that cable. Hopefully we'll have a good cable we can get some of these consumers back on. You got the metered end. I have the non-metered end. I'll plug into that feed through and when you're ready Boy, I was, uh, had good current flow to begin with. It's reducing. It's charging the cable. The cable's accepting that charge. I went from a full reading to a 0.1. That, and to zero. That is a good underground cable. No fault. It's a very good cable. It's held the capacitive charge. 
let's reverse our sticks and take that capacitive charge John, off that it's, cable. It's real important to make sure that you're watching the meter when you plug it in, though. It make truly is. It to truly see is. that uh, initial reading and then watch it bleed to zero. If exactly. you're not watching it, you wouldn't be able to pick that up. You wouldn't up, know so. if you had any current flow. Okay, we'll bleed that. I'll trade the sticks. And go to ground. And at very short duration went to zero. John, it's very important that when we discharge the cable, that the discharge time needs to be equally as long as the charging time. And even though the meter reads zero, it still may have a charge on it. Okay, Kirk, let me go into the non-metered end, into the cable to be tested. If you'll energize that DC high pot. Now we got a good uh, initial current flow. It's accepting the charge. It's dropping to a low value. It's uh, obviously a punctured cable. It's dropping back off again. It's fluctuating, accepting the charge and then discharging it. So we have uh, three situations. We have a good cable, uh, a fully faulted cable, and now a punctured cable. And the only uh, other one that happens extremely rarely is where we have a burnt open and a real dry conditions or in sand and it accepts the DC charge but you have a cable that's burnt open. And you have a faulted cable and it's showing it as good. Uh, what you might want to do is go to the next cabinet and put your URD grounds on that cable that you're testing and then come over and high pot it again. If you don't see the line to ground, full current flow, it's in fact uh, opened. So you have an open cable, and that's the exception. What is the lowest reading we should see there, John, or what would be the highest reading we can accept as good cable? Uh, it's kind of a loaded question, but uh, uh, possibly 70% of that 70% where you see 3.2 on 48, uh, you might see 2.4, 2.5. Uh, but it's stable. It doesn't fluctuate. It doesn't go up and down. It stays right at the same reading all the time. And that would identify a cable that's leaking. Well, good. Is there any other illustrations that you can think of, Kirk? Well, John, in my experience, I've noticed uh, when I've had a lot of moisture around the bushing of the transformer there that I get an extremely high reading. Is that normal or is that okay? That's exactly, yeah, that's normal. Uh, during uh, extremely uh, wet conditions, a lot of moisture in a cabinet, a good cable is still going to carry a higher reading. It's leakage around that bushing. And uh, that's part of the confusion on using this DC high pot adapter to un understand that when you have a line to ground reading, it's fully faulted. When you have a fluctuating reading, it's a, it's a punctured cable. And uh, a substantially high reading that's stable is that. It's leakage current. Uh, either uh, with treed cable, bad splices, or the high moisture. And that shows up even more in a live front situation. If you have live front underground and the bushings are extremely contaminated or a lot of moisture, uh, we've seen almost a line to ground reading where it will hold a fuse. Let's discharge this cable. It went from 0.4 to zero, so we're, uh, we're completely discharged. Well, you've seen us put the Hastings phase tail through its paces outside. I want to thank John and Kirk and Lewis for giving us a hand. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Consumers Energy, our local utility, uh, for giving us uh, some operating space to show you our phase tail in operation. We hope that what we've shown you today will answer some of the questions you've had. I hope that what we've shown you will tell you about some of the features and benefits that we offer that we believe uh, make the Hastings Phase Tail Unit a tool that can really help you out in your operating systems, whether it be on overhead use or underground use. If you have any questions, please feel free to call your Hastings rep within your state or your territory or your part of the country, or you're also welcome to call the factory at 616. 945-9541. Thanks for giving us the time to tell you about the Hastings Phase Tell.